Euro Swiss. Yeah. Science in a bottle, an off-the-shelf plastic water bottle. Dozens of water bottles filled with high-tech electronics to measure wave properties. Onboard is an inertial measurement unit, or an IMU, and that's comprised of an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. And so what that means is the accelerometer is measuring forces in the X, Y, and Z, and the gyroscope is measuring rotations about those axes, and finally the magnetometer is just an additional aid that allows it to orient itself in the Earth reference frame. So what we do is we take those forces and those um, rotations and integrate them to position so that we can determine the bobbing around of the buoy. Okay, ready! Bobbing in the ocean waves, micro-swifts, the latest small and less costly version of the much larger swift buoys, an oceanographic float developed by the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington. Our group has been building swift floats for a long time. And it's been well over 10 years that we've been making these. And we started building these systems because we wanted to make measurements very close to the ocean surface. We wanted to get away from the influence of the research vessel, which has a wake and causes turbulence in its propellers and all those things. And it really disturbed the measurements we were trying to make. So building these systems, building the original Swift buoys and now building the Micro Swift buoys has been a great opportunity to get students involved. I wanted to get into more oceanographic instrument development um, and was fortunate enough to find Jim's lab and he had a spot when I was looking. I actually found Jim through uh, just a Google search through the UW faculty page in APL. You know, researchers who do uh, wave observations, study wave mechanics, and I was really excited to do that, so that's how I ended up here. So we spent this past uh, October in, for a month in North Carolina just deploying, uh, we ended up deploying 2,187 uh, of these out into the ocean and we were able to get them all back except one. Micro Swifts play a role in Dunex, the During Nearshore Events Experiment. The larger goals of Dunex are to study what happens to our coastlines during storm events, which is something that's usually looked over in models. However, a lot of the changes to our coastlines really occurs during those storm events. Storm events drive huge erosion, large waves, large setup on the beach. Um, and so we want to study those events to see how we can better either forecast these events, uh, make predictions for people to evacuate, and uh, how we can help protect our coastlines. Um, we deployed them in all kinds of different ways, so whether that was just from throwing them from the pier locally, uh, we took them out on surfboards, we had the local lifeguards work with us and they took them out on their jet ski. We also dropped them from helicopters um, to really get a good widespread in the waves. Micro Swifts in the water to study near shore waves on the outer banks of North Carolina. And soon to be dropped into the paths of hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico. So this summer we are targeting the Gulf of Mexico. This first season we'll be doing primarily helicopter deployments, so out of the open door aircraft, you know, a few hours ahead of the hurricane, you know, in its path, hoping to get them, you know, as the hurricane flies over. As far as buoys are concerned, a lot of the measurements we have right now are point measurements, you know, from one buoy. And really the power of this data set, by deploying these in large arrays, we can sample the hurricane wave field, um, both in a large, uh, Spatial scale and time scale, I mean, that can really be powerful for improving hurricane forecasts. So what we're really hoping to do is to improve these forecasts and so that we can do a much better job of forecasting these waves you know, to the coast where they'll drive things such as wave field setup, you know, storm surge, things of that nature. Now, are we really getting a representative sample when we put one, two, maybe three or four of these buoys out? Wanting to, to make more measurements in space and time led us towards trying to build more buoys we're spinning up a new project to use micro swifts in the Arctic to uh, measure waves along the coast. The Arctic compared to these other environments that Jake and EJ are making measurements in is ice covered almost the entire year. Nine months of the year there's sea ice all along the surface. Uh, in June, going into the summer, it starts to break out um, and we see wave activity along the coast for a few months before it freezes up again in the fall. A lot of the coasts of Alaska is experiencing wildly high erosion rates um, and a large part of that is likely because of the decline of sea ice where there's a much longer period of time where the, the coast is exposed um, without sea ice and so it's exposed to the waves um, coming in from the open water. We're planning to use helicopter to deploy uh, micro swifts along the line extending out from the coast 
um, which will give us nice spatial resolution of what the waves are doing um, to be able to understand how the waves change as they come into the coast and interact with the ice. Our mottos of MicroSwift buoys, a force multiplier, increasing the density of offshore wave observations. In several collaborative experiments, these small, inexpensive floats are collecting vitally important data to arm coastal communities with the science they need to predict, prepare for, and recover from extreme wave events. Mm -hmm.